bookworms, my name is Lindsay, I am the book blogger, and today I am reviewing Cleopatra's Moon by Vicki Alburn Schechter. about Cleopatra's daughter and the fall of their family. Cleopatra's daughter is named Cleopatra Selene. The story begins with the death of a family member when she's 16. It jumps back to the age 7 and then it kind of works up until you reach the end of the book when she meets 16 again. This book is terribly, terribly heartbreaking. The whole time you're reading it, especially in the beginning, you have this big sense of foreboding. You know what's going to happen to this story, so every moment that this happens, the hope that the character has, you feel sorry for her and you feel so bad because you know that this is just a terrible thing that happens. On many occasions, I cried. I felt like it was my mother who died. I felt like it was my family and my life that was falling apart around me. This is not an action book, and yet I still really liked it. I enjoyed this story. I was interested the whole time. I was eager to pick the book back up. Every time I put it down, I caught myself thinking about the characters um, when I wasn't reading. Predictability, this is not really a category that works for this book because it is based on history, so you know where it's going to go anyway. Um, the in-between stuff you don't really know about, and I didn't really expect anything that happened um, as far as the small things go, but the overall ending and, and that sort of thing, I mean, you're supposed to know what happens in the story, so. Gore, there is definitely gore in this book. Mostly the gore is from animal violence. Um, this does take place in a time when animal sacrifice was a normal thing in society. Um, you did this for the gods and for protection and, and that sort of thing. Does she go into the nitty gritty details? No, not so much. Um, but she does use the words sweet metallic blood or sweet metallic scent blood on many occasions in the book. She used it so many times I actually wondered if she realized she kept repeating the same set of words. There is also a scene where the main character is like carrying around um, the dead head of a dog and as, she doesn't, like I said, she doesn't go into too much detail about it. She could have been extremely more nasty with describing it. Um, but my head kind of filled in the nastiness on its own. So as far as violence and gore towards humans, there isn't that much. Um, they talk about rape, but it never actually happens. Um, they pretty much keep the human violence out of the story. You know what's going on, but you don't have to actually witness most of it. Sex, yes and no. Um, it's a normal part of life in this society. Um, nudity is kind of common. Um, people have casual sex. The main character does not. Um, there's, she talks about it and she thinks about it, but, you know, true to the YA thing, um, she never actually puts out. Hey guys, I need to interrupt myself real quick here. Um, when I filmed this, I had forgotten to do the protagonist meter. I'm not really sure how I forgot to do that, but I remember today at work that I didn't do that. So I'm doing that really quickly now. Cleopatra Selene is really hard to place on here because she is definitely a damsel in distress when it comes to fighting. She is royal. She is not trained to fight. She is trained to lead an army, not to fight within one. However, she is very strong-willed. She will fight for her country. She will do whatever is necessary to take care of the people that she's loyal to and to stand up for what is right. She is not whiny, she is not weak or pathetic in any way, and the one situation where she was truly, truly threatened physically, she fought back and she managed to get away. While she wasn't, you know, Deuce or Kerrigan really kicking butt, she still managed to survive and she still fought back. This book has a lot of magic in it, a lot of spiritual magic in it. The gods play a very large role in Cleopatra Selene's life. So because of their influence and because of her political power combined with how much I liked her and combined with how very strong-willed she is, I decided to put her between Lucy and Kate. I really struggled and fought hard to figure out where she belonged on this meter, and that, I think, is the best representation on where she belongs. One thing I want to say about the romance, and of course there is romance in this, the triangle between her and two other men, it's, 
I knew how it would end because I knew the history. So it didn't have that, um, ooh, I wonder which one she's going to end up with kind of allure to it. But I still found myself, when I wasn't reading the book, feeling like a little kid experiencing her first crush. And it wasn't the giddy excitement kind of feeling. It's the I don't understand these feelings, I don't like it, make it go away kind of feeling. I don't really know what caused that, what about this book made me feel that way, but you know, it was still there and it still made me those experience those feelings I hadn't felt in a very long time. As far as I know, this is not meant to be a series. Um, she could probably continue on the story if she wanted to because where the book ends, there's not much left known of Cleopatra Selene's life. Um, so there's a lot of leeway there if she wanted to keep it going, but the impression I got from the author is that she doesn't write series. She just writes one book about history and than another one. Okay, so now I'll read. I'll go ahead and read the book. Um, it's a nice paragraph that's not sad, and it's one of the few really happy and exciting moments in the book, so I thought it'd be a good one to share with you guys. I had never seen my beloved city so packed. By the tens of thousands, Alexandrians and Egyptians flooded the wide avenues and byways, desperate to catch a glimpse of us or of father on his parade route. The richest of the noble Greek families sat on tiered benches in the square before us while tradesmen, merchants, and the poor filled into the streets, squirming and jostling for position. Some even shimmied up trees, climbed onto the shoulders of statues of my ancestors, and scrambled to the tops of pediments and roofs to get a better view of us. The roar of the crowd as my father approached in his chariot sounded like waves crashing against the rocks on Pharaoh's Island, home of our great lighthouse. When Tata climbed onto the dais to join us, his golden armor gleaming, his face soaked with sweat but shining with joy. He looked like a god, the god of war. Reading that reminds me of another point. She, Cleopatra Selene has such a love for Egypt and a love for Alexandria. And I started to think that, you know, people don't really have that these days. I don't have this overwhelming love for Michigan or this overwhelming love for the United States. I'm glad that I live here and I'm grateful for all that I have. But I don't have this... I would never refer to the United States or Michigan as my beloved state or my beloved country. It, if anything, it made me want to go to Egypt that much more, just to experience maybe a part of that love for a place or a country that Cleopatra Selene had experienced. There isn't going to be a spoiler room today, and it isn't because I don't want to discuss this book, because if you have this, read this book or you have a love for Cleopatra or Egyptology, I would love to discuss all that stuff. But because this is based on history, there really isn't anything spoilerish that I can talk about. Everybody should know what happens to the characters. If you don't know, then you really need to bone up on your history. It doesn't matter if you're Egyptian, if you're British, or if you're American. It's the world's history. It's all a part of us. Personally, I don't really see much that I can really talk about to warrant an actual spoiler room. You know, because the point of a spoiler room is to discuss the book and yet not ruin it for other people. So I don't really see the point in putting it in this one. I have to give this book a double recommend. Um, it doesn't make it better than the other books who only received one recommendation. It's just that I really want to emphasize how much I think you should read this book. Even if you, you're like me and you prefer action books, this was still such a great read and I really enjoyed it. And I couldn't believe how much I liked this book and how interested in the characters that I was. I was actually afraid that I would be bored while reading this book because I'm like, this is all going to be about political intrigue and not any action, but that just wasn't the case for me. I felt for the characters, I felt for the situation, and I was grateful that I do not live in a society where this could happen to me. This is truly a book that I am going to love and appreciate for many years to come. Alright, so that's my review for Cleopatra's Moon by Vicki Elvier Schechter. Um, I hope you guys really think about reading it because I know you guys are going to enjoy it. Um, here are some other reviews and videos that I think you'll like. And until next time, happy reading.